Walls. This is where we enter the details for our walls. Pricing the walls in most estimating programmes can be complex and time-consuming, but the NHE Plus makes the entire process very simple. You don't need to hunt through the programme, going through multiple windows to find the type of wall you're looking for. All the options you may need are here on the pricing sheet. We can price a single or double wall, plinth walls, we've got numerous options for the method of construction, brick, block, timber frame, stone, flint, ICF, plus a custom wall option. So even if it's being built from straw bales, we can price it. Let's take a look. Selecting the wall type, single or double. First we select the wall type. We have two thumbnail pictures at the top. One is for single walls and one is for double walls. The first step is to click on the thumbnail of the wall type that's being constructed. The job where pricing does have a double wall. Both thumbnails work in the same way, but let's take a quick look at the single wall thumbnail. OK, so we click the thumbnail. It opens the interactive picture. On the left are the available wall types. Just click the method required. See, the main picture changes, so it's very clear what's been selected. Check, and if necessary, adjust the material selection in the drop-down menu, so it relates to the method of construction. There are further options to adjust the size of the brick or block. When the form is complete, just click Enter Details. The programme will input your selections onto the pricing sheet. Let's look at the double walls and get ours entered in. OK, so we click the picture. It's very similar to the single wall, but we have wall types on the left and right-hand side. We just need to pick the method of construction for the external wall. The options for this are on the left-hand side. The wall type options for the internal wall are located here, on the right. Currently, as we can see in the main picture, it is set as brick for the external, block for the internal. To adjust the external, click the pictorial reference on the left. So we could have block, stone, flint, or a custom wall. We're doing brick. The internal wall works in exactly the same way. It's set on block at the moment, but we could change it to brick, timber frame, stone, flint, insulated concrete formwork, or a custom wall type. We're doing a brick, block, double wall. But let's just look at the custom wall option. If we were doing a custom wall on the external leaf, we would click the custom wall option here on the left hand side. We then type the description of the wall into this yellow box. Next, type in the name of the material that we would be using in this yellow box. Now we need to tell the program the information about the material we're using, so it can calculate the costs. Click on the picture, enter in the dimensions of the material and the joint that will be used. Enter the cost per unit for the custom wall material. Finally, enter the number of hours it would take to construct one square metre of this custom wall. When completed, click Enter Details. It really is that straightforward. OK, let's change this back to a brick block construction. Whichever wall type is chosen, we have the ability to adjust the dimensions of the material unit that's being used. We just click the picture here, so we can change the size of the brick and its joint. On our internal wall, we can do the same. Let's click on the block. Blocks do come in different sizes and widths. Allowing for this is simple. Just change the dimensions in here. We can adjust the material for each wall type in this drop-down menu here. This is now set how we need it, so click Enter Details. Gang Rates The labour costs for the construction of our selected wall type will be based on the settings of the gang information that's located here at the top of the pricing sheet. This is the default setting, so two bricklayers and one bricklayer's labourer. We can change the quantity of men being used and the tradesperson carrying out the task if we wish. It's important to remember that you do need to leave at least one person in this form, or there'll be no one allocated to carry out the building of the walls, and the programme won't be able to calculate the labour. The blue info icon contains help and information about how the gang rates are calculated by the programme. And a pictorial example is located here on the pricing sheet too. Entering the wall dimensions. When the wall type has been selected, we need to tell the programme the overall dimensions of the main wall section. If the external walls are the same as the walls in the oversight, then just tick this box. The programme will automatically calculate the length based on the information in the ground floor section. The walls in this job are the same as the oversight, so we'll tick it. 
We can view further information about this calculation by clicking on this picture. If the walls aren't the same, then just enter the length of the external wall into the red box. Next, enter the height of the walls. Here we enter in the area of any other walls in this main walls section that haven't been accounted for, like these gables. Finally, we put in the length and height of any partition walls. It's important to note that stud work is not added in this section. If there is stud work, we enter it into the first fixed carpentry section of the pricing sheet. We can use the thumbnail to adjust the type of partition wall if required. OK, everything for our main walls is worked out. Additional wall sections. Additional wall sections, for example the first floor walls, can be added in. The additional wall section also includes plinths. Let's click the additional wall section button. This opens the form. The NHE Plus enables us to price up to four different wall types. We can add up to three further sections of wall. So if a job requires, for example, a timber frame section of wall, a brick and block section of wall, and perhaps a section of flint wall, all of them can be priced. We're in section two of the additional wall section form. Let's put in the first floor walls. We enter the title. We have the small thumbnail pictures, so we can select if it is a single or double, as well as the method of construction, if it's different from the main wall. Ours is the same. Next, we enter the length of the external wall. Ours is a double wall, so we put in the length of the internal wall too, followed by the height of this wall section. We don't have any other areas of wall to add, but they're entered here if required. The job wear pricing does not have any further additional wall sections, but for the purpose of demonstrating the available options and the flexibility of the programme, we will enter another section and remove it before we leave the wall section of the pricing sheet. Let's click section three. Our example is going to be a double wall. Click the thumbnail. The external wall will be flint and the internal wall will be blocks. We need to select the flint we'll be using here in the drop down menu. Now enter the details. We'll name this section Walls to Lounge. Now just enter the length of the walls external and internal, the height, and if there are any other areas of wall. When all the information in the additional walls section is completed, we click Enter Details. Shortly, we will view how the NHE Plus enters this information onto the pricing sheet. Plinth wall. There isn't a plinth wall on this job, but let's take a look at how one can be allowed for. We'll enter one in and remove it after looking at how it works. Before entering the plinth, which is going to go around the bottom of the main walls, we will adjust the height of the main wall to two linear meters. Okay, so we've opened the additional walls section by clicking on the additional wall section thumbnail located on the pricing sheet. The plinth wall section is here. To open it, Click the plinth button. This is really straightforward. In this example, we will have a double wall. But this can be adjusted by clicking on the single wall thumbnail. Right, so we enter the length. This will be the same as our main walls. So 56 linear meters for the external and 54.4 for the internal. Next, the actual height of the plinth. This will be 0.4. As we enter these in, the diagram highlights the section of the picture that the measurement relates to. We can choose the type of backslip. By default it's block, but there are options for brick, stone or flint. When the type is selected, the material for the backslip can be chosen using the drop down. If we click this question mark, we have a visual reference. It shows the height of the plinth wall, height from the foundation to DPC and the overall height. Here we can choose the type of material for the top brick. If we click on this question mark, we can adjust the number of rows at the top. By default it is two, but this can be changed. The program will work out how many bricks are in each row based on the length, then multiply this by the number of rows. The material for the corner brick is chosen here. When this form is completed, click Enter Details. We'll do this now. Our quotation doesn't have a plinth, and when we've looked at how the program deals with it, we will remove these details. Wall structure. Let's look at the wall structure subsection. The actual job that where pricing has double walls constructed from brick and block. The first floor walls are also constructed of brick and block. The walls to lounge and plinth that we will see shortly 
are not actually required for this job and are only in here to show how the programme deals with additional wall sections and a plinth. When we've looked at the wall structure subsection, these will be removed from our quote. OK, so the first item in the wall structure subsection is the facing bricks. Let's click the question mark. As mentioned in the ground floor walls below DPC movie section, the facing bricks are moved here to the walls section. The pricing sheet is laid out in the order that a real job would run. As a rule, facing bricks aren't laid until after the groundworks are done. This prevents mud and concrete getting on them and helps keep the finished brickwork clean. We can see the number of square metres of facing brick we will need and the costs and hours. Currently, all of our wall materials are being displayed on a metre square basis. We can switch this so it shows an exact number. Just click the thumbnail. Next, we have the details for the main walls. These are the walls that we entered first at the top of the wall section. Each section is clearly marked with the title in the first column. You will notice that the main wall's description is in a yellow box. If required, the name can be adjusted. The materials are in white boxes. We're not able to adjust these in the wall structure subsection. If a change needs to be made, we can go back to the top of the pricing sheet and do it in the picture or here in these drop downs. Here are the first floor walls. The title that is put into any of the additional wall sections will be brought through here. If we hadn't changed it to first floor walls, by default, this would have been called section two. Again, the materials are in white boxes, so if they need to be adjusted, just go back into the additional walls section and do it in the form. Here are our walls to lounge. We selected flint for the external wall and blocks for the internal. Everything's clearly laid out. Finally, we have the information about the plinth. This is broken down so we can clearly see the costs and quantities for each element, these being the external and internal wall, the backslip, top and corner units. The corner units are automatically worked out and have been calculated based on the internal and external corners we entered earlier. We will now remove the plinth and the walls to lounge before going on to our next movie section. Soldier course. Allowing for a soldier course is really easy. The job that we're pricing doesn't require one, but we will enter in an example to see how it works. Let's tick the box. This will open the soldier course section. Now, choose the type of material for the soldier course. By default, it is brick, but we could select block, stone, flint, or even enter our own custom material. Next, just enter the length of the soldier course. This can be put into the red box. Or, click the thumbnail picture like this. We'll enter the length as 11 linear metres. We also have options to adjust the dimensions of the brick and joint and the height of the soldier course. Remember to ensure that these match. So for example, if we increase the height of the brick to 225 mil, we would need to change the height of the soldier course to 0.235 linear metres, as it needs to be inclusive of the joint too. The costs and hours for our soldier course are calculated. We do need to tell the programme the section of wall that this soldier course will be going into, so it can deduct the area of the soldier course from it. If we click the drop down, the wall sections that we have added are listed. So we've got main walls and first floor walls. Just select the correct section of wall. We do need to check the hours. The programme bases the labour on the cost that the bricklayers get per thousand bricks. Laying soldier courses is more time consuming than, for example, laying a normal stretcher bond. Under the hours, we have a clock. If we click on this, we can increase the cost allowed per metre square by a percentage. The hours allowed will also increase when we adjust this. We don't have a soldier course on the job that we're pricing, so we will just remove the number from the red box and close this section. Coins. If coins are required, they can be included. Tick the box to open the coins section. We can select the type of material they will be constructed out of by clicking this picture. There are options for brick, block, stone, flint or customised. By default, it is set as brick. But whichever option is chosen, the dimensions of the materials to be used can be adjusted. Enter the total number of linear metres of coins required in the red box. The size of the coins can be adjusted here in the yellow boxes, or we can click on the thumbnail picture and use the visual reference. The costs are automatically worked out. 
we do need to specify which section of the wall the coins will be in. This will enable the program to deduct the area of coins from it. Laying coins is more time consuming than laying, for example, a normal stretcher bond. We can change the hours to reflect this by typing in the yellow box. Or we can click this useful clock. In here, we can increase the cost per hour and the hours by a percentage. We don't have coins on the job that we're pricing, so we will just remove the number from the red box and close this section. Damp proof course. The DPC for the external and internal walls is automatically calculated. We can see the quantity required and we can adjust the material by using the drop down menu. Partition walls. The height and length of the partition walls required on this job were entered at the top of the walls section. The NHE Plus has calculated the DPC for our partition walls. We can switch this off if it isn't required. We can also use the yellow drop down to change the material. The quantity of blocks for the partition walls is here. The material isn't a white box, as we selected this at the top of the walls section. If we need to change this, just go back to the top of the walls section and use the yellow drop down in the partition walls section to adjust. General wall materials. The general wall materials section is where we find items such as sand, cement, ties and insulation. Let's take a look. We didn't opt to have a dry silo in the site setup section of the pricing sheet. This means it's not allowed for here, as the program knows we don't have one. We can change this by going back to the site setup and putting one in. The program will then automatically switch to the dry silo option. The sand and cement for the mortar joints is here. We can see the quantity of sand that we'll need for our walls. We can adjust the type of sand and we can change the way it's delivered. For example, it may be more cost effective to get it delivered in a larger load. Or if we're working on a site with limited space or access, we may need to reduce the size of the load. But it is worth taking into account the best way to order it. We can change the mix on the cement like this. Wall ties are here. If we don't need them, we can untick them. We are going to use these. We can see the quantity required. This is also a good example where the magnifying glass tool is so useful. Due to the length of the material description, viewing it is a bit tricky. But click the magnifying glass. The entire drop down box for the wall ties, along with all the materials in it, is made larger. So seeing what material is selected and changing it is really simple. We have a red question mark. If we click this, we can see exactly how these wall ties are being calculated. We can adjust these settings directly in the picture if we want. Click the eye icon for more information on the way that wall ties are calculated. Frame ties for the windows can be included. Just click the box. They will be automatically calculated and included in the cost. We can view the way that they've been worked out and adjust this criteria if we want. I will untick this as we don't need these. We're putting plastic frames in and these will be fitted after the walls are done. The screws for these are allowed for in the windows section and the fitting is allowed for in the first fix. Wall insulation for single walls is here. We don't have any single walls on this job, so nothing is calculated. If we did, this would be automatically worked out. We do have cavity insulation. This is allowed for and worked out here. Plasticizer is here. We can see how the program has worked it out. We can adjust this setting by changing the ratio if required. Lime for mortar has a blue box. Our judgment is needed. If it is required, then enter the quantity here in the blue box. Insulating concrete formwork. We don't have any insulating concrete formwork on this job, so the section that accounts for this is closed at the moment. Insulating concrete formwork, or ICF, is made of polystyrene blocks that slot together in a way that's very much like Lego. Once constructed, they're filled with concrete. The ICF walls can be strengthened with reinforcement bars, these are slotted in prior to the concrete being poured. To allow for ICF, we do need to specify it at the top of the walls section. Let's go back and put some in and take a look at how it works. OK, our main wall is a brick block construction, but let's change our internal leaf to ICF. We'll click the picture and enter this onto our pricing sheet. Everything is immediately worked out. When you're using ICF, the standard blocks are accounted for here in the wall structure subsection. We can see the quantity and costs associated with them. Let's go to the insulated concrete formwork subsection where the rest of the details can be viewed and checked. The corner blocks are automatically worked out. The vertical and horizontal rebars 
along with the ties, are also calculated. We can switch any of these options off like this, and the costs will be removed. But let's switch them back on and see how they work. Let's click the red question mark for the vertical rebars. So every 600, we're putting a vertical rebar, and we have one bar in each row. Both of these settings can be changed. The program is also allowing an overlap of 0.3 linear metres for joining the next walls. Again, we can adjust this. The horizontal rebar settings can be changed too. Let's look at the default settings. The first bar will be 0.25 linear metres or 250 mil off the ground. The subsequent rebars have 500 mil or 0.5 linear metre centres. Again, we have an allowance of one bar per row. All of these settings can be changed. The current percentage allowed for joining is here. We can increase or decrease this if we wish. It's important to note that this isn't the wastage element. The rebar ties are automatically worked out. Basically, wherever a horizontal crosses over a vertical, a rebar tie is allowed. Next we have the end stops. End stops are used on the corners. Some ICF construction just uses standard blocks with open ends on the corners that are filled in to block off the end. If these are being used, then corner blocks aren't required. As you will see, we have corner blocks selected, so the end stops aren't being calculated. If we switch the corner blocks off, end stops are automatically worked out. If we go back to the wall structure, you will see that the quantity of standard blocks required has increased. The reason this has happened is because the corner blocks we had in were replacing many of the standard blocks. The stop ends for the openings, such as windows, are automatically worked out, regardless of corner blocks being allowed. If we switch it back to having corner blocks, we see the costs of the end stops for corners are automatically removed. Here is the concrete for the fill of the blocks. We can change the time allowed for filling each cubic metre if we want by clicking on the question mark and adjusting the red box. The concrete pump has a blue box, so estimator's judgement is required. If one is needed, just enter the number of days that it's needed for, check the hours in the pre-filled yellow box. We're not using insulated concrete formwork on the job that we're pricing, so we will now remove this. Before we switch the main walls back to the brick block construction that we're doing, we will take a look at the timber frame options. Timber frame. Here we have the associated items for a timber frame. The job we're pricing is brick and block. Doesn't require a timber frame, but to show you how it works, we'll put one in. We've just been looking at the insulated concrete formwork, and we do need to remove this. So let's go back to the top. This is also a good way for us to see how simple and quick it is to swap the method of wall construction. We'll click the double wall picture. We will leave the external wall as brick, but we'll change the internal wall to a timber frame. We need to select the material for our timber frame. This is sawn, 47 by 100 mil treated softwood. We click enter. Okay, when we select a timber frame, as you will see, due to the nature of it, we do need to provide the program with a few more details. We have some additional but very straightforward red boxes to fill in. So we enter the number of bottom plates, this is two, we'll put in one top plate and one centre row of noggins. We can change the material for these items by using the corresponding yellow drop down menu if we want. We've got 16 internal external corners. The centres are a pre filled yellow box that we need to check. There are standard choices in the drop down. We can use the thumbnail to enter this information in if we want. The diagram shows us each part of the timber frame, so the top plate, rows of noggins, the bottom plate. It also provides a useful pictorial reference for understanding how to enter the length of the timber frame. We have already entered the numbers in the red boxes on the pricing sheet, so they've been brought through into this picture. We can adjust them in here, or if we want, select alternate materials for each part of the timber frame structure if required. The quantity of studs being allowed per corner is also shown. Let's go back to the pricing sheet. The NHE Plus has automatically calculated the length of the stud that we require. It's taken into account the top and bottom plates and the thickness of the timber that we've selected. This is so handy when it comes to ordering, as if we want the supplier to cut the studs to the required lengths for us, we have that information to hand. Let's take a look at how the wall structure subsection has now allowed for our timber frame. It's laid out really clearly, so we can see the costs and quantities for the bottom and top plates, as well as the noggins. We'll notice that the word main has been added in the description column, so we know that this is referring to the timber framework in our main walls. The cost of each stud is also automatically calculated. See? It's based on the actual length that we've just looked at. We'll notice that the number of studs required has increased. 
This is because our wastage allowance has been built into this figure. The programme has looked at the linear metre price of our material, then looked at the actual length of the stud and calculated the cost per stud for us. Associated items for timber frame. Let's now go further down the wall section of the pricing sheet and look at the associated items for this timber frame. Here are the fixings. We can see how the programme has calculated this by clicking on the question mark. There are quite a lot of numbers in this picture, all of which are fully adjustable. So if we want, we can change the quantity of fixings on each element of our timber frame and adjust the centres too. This really does go into the fine detail. It is best to adjust these type of small details in our master file. That way, they'll be set to our preferences every time we price. Structural cladding to board out our stud work with plyboard is here. The quantity is automatically calculated and we can change the material in the drop down menu here if we want. We are provided with the option for a secondary cladding on the other side. We can see the quantity and costs for it here. By default this is switched on, but if it's not needed, we can switch it off like this. The vapour barrier is worked out here. The secondary membrane is also calculated. Again, we can switch this off if it isn't needed. The timber lintels and timber opening side supports aren't calculated yet. The intuitive nature of the NHE Plus means these will be automatically worked out when we've entered the details of any window and door frames on that section of our pricing sheet. The text here explains this. At this stage, we can view and adjust the bearings for the lintel. Currently, it's set to allow 150mm on each side. We can also view and adjust the number of supports that are being allowed. Insulation for our timber frame walls is worked out. We can see all the details and change the selected material if we want. By default, a second layer of insulation is allowed, but we can switch this off if it isn't needed. The restraint straps are here, and we can change the spacing of these if we want by using the picture. Our job does not have an internal timber frame wall, so this option will be removed from our pricing sheet. Cladding for timber frame walls. The job wear pricing doesn't have any timber frame walls, but we will just take a look at the cladding for timber frame wall options. These are automatically calculated when an external timber frame wall is entered here at the top of the walls section of the pricing sheet. OK, so we have now removed the internal timber frame wall that we looked at earlier. Let's change the main walls to a single stud work wall. We click the single wall thumbnail, select the timber frame option, check the material and click enter details. Instantly the pricing sheet has adjusted to allow for this and we're provided with additional red boxes. The length of this single wall is 54.4 linear metres. The height is 2.4 linear metres. We'll put in two rows of bottom plates, one row of centre noggins and one row of top plates. We can adjust the material selection for these items in the yellow drop down menu if we wish. The centres can also be changed if required. We will now skip over the wall structure. The details of how the wall structure subsection deals with timber frame can be viewed in the timber frame section of this movie. OK, so this is the cladding for the timber frame walls subsection. Let's take a look. At the top we have the option for a render finish or cladding. We'll look at the cladding finish first. As we're cladding our timber frame, the options for mesh and its fixings are switched off. These would be used if we were rendering. We can switch these on and it will automatically calculate, but we don't need these for cladding, so I'll switch them back off. The external cladding is here. Let's click the question mark. By default, it's set as timber, but we can select no cladding or plastic. Let's click plastic. Okay, so we need to tell the program the type of plastic cladding we'll be using. Select the material from this drop down list. Automatically, everything is worked out. We can see the quantities and costs for the cladding based on our material selection. And here are the fixings for our cladding. Here are the grounds for our external and internal corners. If we click on the blue question marks, we can see that the ground that is being calculated is highlighted blue. Here are the internal and external corner materials. Our selected material comes in 5 linear metre lengths and the programme has worked out the number of lengths we'll need to do our 10 external and 6 internal corners. As we've opted for plastic cladding, these options have not calculated. The fixings for our plastic internal and external corners are here. If we click on the question mark, we can drill into the detail of how these are being worked out. Here are the fixings for the internal and external grounds. Again, we can view the way they're being worked out and adjust them if required. As we have plastic cladding, these fixings for the finished corners and the cheeks for openings timber have not been calculated, as they're not needed. The cheeks for openings plastic and any required fixings will be calculated when the windows and doors section of the pricing sheet has been completed. At this stage, we can use the plastic cheeks fixings question mark 
to see how they'll be worked out and adjust it if required. Let's just quickly switch to timber cladding. Click the picture, select timber. We need to tell the program the type of timber cladding we'll be using. Let's choose feather edge boarding 11 by 150 mil. Enter the details. Instantly everything's worked out. As we can see, all the plastic cladding options have been removed and the timber options have been calculated. So the cladding and its fixings, internal and external finish corners, along with the fixings. As with the plastic options, the timber cheeks and their fixings are not yet worked out. As the text here explains, they will be calculated when the windows and doors have been entered. Let's go back to the top of this section. As we've seen, the cladding options are very straightforward. We just select cladding by clicking the picture here at the top, then just choose the type of cladding we're going to use. As the text explains, if you require the walls to be clad with tiles, then this can be allowed for. Click the cladding option thumbnail and choose the no cladding option in the picture. This will set the pricing sheet so you can then enter the tile cladding details in the tile hanging subsection that's located here in the roof tiling section. Let's go back to the cladding for external wall subsection and look at the render option. To select render, simply click the picture. Instantly the cladding options are switched off and the render options are switched on. So the number of sheets of external mesh we require are calculated. We can see the costs and quantities. The fixings for this mesh are worked out too. The intuitive logical nature of the NHE Plus means that the other items and tasks required for the rendering of this external wall have been worked out for us already in the plastering external walls subsection of our pricing sheet. We'll just quickly jump to that section and take a look. See, everything we require has been automatically worked out for us in this section. We can see the area of external wall that's being rendered along with all the costs and hours for each item and task that will need to be carried out to complete it. Let's go back to the walls section. As I mentioned, the job wear pricing doesn't have any external timber frame walls, so the cladding and render options aren't required. We will now remove these from the pricing sheet and reset our walls to the double wall brick block option that this quote is based on, chimney. We'll now look at how to price a chimney. Our job doesn't require a chimney, but we'll put one in to take a look at how it works and then remove it. First, we tell the program that we want to allow for a chimney by clicking this button and switching the chimney section on. Instantly it opens. There is a red box. We just need to enter the height of the chimney liner. Let's put in seven linear meters. All of the lining and associated items are automatically worked out for us. It's important to note that the blocks and bricks to go around the chimney aren't calculated. We do need to go back here to the top of the walls section and allow for them in the additional walls, other area of walls box. That's here. Let's go back to the chimney section. So our chimney liners are here. We can see the quantity required. The program has looked at the length of the liner we've selected and worked out how many of these we'll need. Just to show you, if we select a smaller liner, like this 150mm one, instantly the program recalculates the quantity required. Let's click on the chimney liner bends question mark. By default, the program is set to allow two of these per chimney. We can of course adjust this if we want. We will notice that all of the quantity boxes in the chimney section that have been filled out for us are yellow. Due to the nature of chimneys, the program knows that some flexibility may be required. So we can override the default calculations on all the items if necessary. The fire back is here and beneath it we have the chimney pot. We can change the material selection if we want. The fire hearth and surround is a blue box. It's been left to our judgment. Enter the quantity, if any, that will be required. We'll enter one. The default material is actually a PC sum allowance, but we can select something else, or if the one we want isn't listed, we can add it to our library. The flue starter is here. Let's click on the fire vent pipe question mark. We can see that this is set to allow two per chimney. We can change this if we want here in the picture. We can also adjust the material in here as well. The fire vent bends are worked out. Again, clicking on the picture enables us to see the default quantity setting, which is also two, and this can be changed. Air vents are calculated based on the default of two per chimney, so one either end. This can be easily adjusted here in the picture or in the quantity column of the pricing sheet. By default, the external air vent sleeves have been allowed, but we can switch this option off by clicking the button if they aren't needed. Finally, there's the air vent in the floor. So that's this grid shown here in the picture. So as we can see, to allow for a chimney, just switch the section on to open it, allow for the bricks and blocks to go around it in the additional walls, other walls area section, and simply enter the height of the chimney into the red box at the top. We'll now remove this chimney from our quote. Additional items. 
Let's take a look at the additional items that have been allowed for in our walls section. The first item is a mixer. We'll click the question mark. In here we can adjust the type of mixer that's used. The number of days that it will be required for has been automatically calculated for us, based on all the information that we've entered in the rest of the walls section. The text here confirms that delivery and collection have been included. The thermal break closes to reveals will be allowed for here once we've entered our windows and doors. This is explained in this text. At this stage, if we know that we will not require these, we can switch this option off by clicking the button. If we do want them, we can view and adjust the default material by using the drop-down menu. If a visual reference as to what these are is needed, we just click the question mark. Toothing out, or as it's sometimes called, stitching in, is here. This may be required if an extension is being built and it's joining onto an existing building. Let's click on the question mark. OK, so this provides us with a visual reference, but also gives us the option to tweak or fine-tune the labour. We're pricing a new build five-bed house, so we won't be doing any toothing out. But just to show you, if we enter, say, 20 linear metres of toothing out in this blue box, all of the costs are worked out. We'll just remove this. If toothing out is being done, we can allow for any plant, for example a chipping hammer, that may be required. Just enter the quantity of days it will be needed. Let's click on the wall jointing profiles question mark. If we were doing a straight joint, we could allow for the wall jointing profiles that would be required. Like the toothing out, we can fine tune the way the hours for this are calculated. Then we just enter the quantity of wall jointing profiles that are needed into the blue box on the pricing sheet. The final item on the associated items subsection of our walls that we may need to include is shipping costs. More often than not, any delivery or shipping costs for wall materials will be included and built into the price that we pay. But if an item or items do have additional shipping or delivery costs, just enter the cost into this blue box. Remember, this needs to be just the cost. Any markups and VAT are added on afterwards on the summary. Extra row and totals. The totals for our walls section are here. We do have the option to add an extra row if there is an additional item or task that's needed. We can view how to do this in the ground floor, adding an additional row movie section. We can see the costs of the materials, plant and labour for our walls section. The hours are here and this is the overall total. We can view the summary of this section if we want by clicking this button. We're taken to the summary report. To return to the walls section of the pricing sheet, click this button. We will now leave the walls section and the subsequent sections of our quote will be based on the main walls and first floor walls being double walls of a brick and block construction.